Hello everyone, so I will talk about education under the lens of Black sociology and what it means, uh, the creation of knowledge and uh, the, the, the education itself. Um, uh, okay, next slide. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about uh, school segregation. Um, so, and I also want to think about this framework of a uh, notion about time and how we've been using along the semester. We, I, I'm gonna try to compare the now versus then and so we can uh, have a clear, uh, clean framework of these uh, notions. So a little of the background too. Um, so um, obviously it's the little background is Percy versus Ferguson and Brown versus the world of education. Uh, also, uh, this is where Percy actually challenged the law, a law in Louisiana where um, limits people from um, from uh, from uh, access to the same service that a white person will have. Um, this this can challenge the idea of the challenge the, the 13 and the 14 amendment and Brown versus the World of Education. It's this notion the separate equal. Um, actually, well, the the foundation here is then the challenge to what it means to be a citizen. The 14th Amendment and meanings of citizen. And then this, this photograph is kind of symbolic of, yes, you may have the same services, but at the same time, uh, the quality and services and, and the symbolic violence between them. Now, I want to think about uh, the new Jim Crow era. This, in this book, written by uh, let's meet Michelle Alexander, she, dis she describes in this book how, how the criminalization of the black body is part of the notion of separate, separate individuals and how we pass from uh, explicit to an implicit uh, uh, racism. And, and, the, and now it is constructed in, into the system, the legal bodies. Using the same legal bodies, uh, there was like this: the school to pipelines and colon and colorism, um, and how these schools, the system, use legislation to to promote uh, separations. Uh, in this case, the school adopt policies uh, that allow them to suspend the students. Gone through the last school act in nineteen. 1994 uh, established and recommendation of an individual who brings a gun. So it, it also this also I want you to think about these these laws. They may sound then they are good, but at the same time it doesn't add those kind of like don't ask why this individual is has has a, a gun and in his in his possession right now or in their possession. What's going on around the individuals like is to make this individual to have a gun and at the young age of like uh, you are younger than, younger than 18. Um, this, they utilize the broken window theory, which is that, that it will punish any behavior or any uh, misconception. Uh, For example, talking bad, dressing and dressing inappropriately. Um, being late. So those are subjective laws and that's when we use colorism and how these ideas are utilized, are, are reflect racial stereotypes, uh, uh, but doesn't affect only the black student as well affects the, the, uh, like the white student by bringing in as a white supremacy and how these teachers become um, tools of the system. Uh, so uh, here, um, I wanna talk to you about uh, civil rights era and uh, we all know the mainstream narrative of the, about, about the civil rights era, hopefully. hopefully. Um, and how popular some characters were like Michael X and uh, Martin Luther King. But at the same time, we don't know that much about um, the Black Power Movement. And the Black Power Movement was a contemporary a contemporary movement uh, to the civil rights, which was more critical about the social issues in the Black community and critical about um, the legislation power. Uh, 
in black power also emphasize in racial justice and what, and what it means to be a citizen, a citizen identity, the black identity and democracy itself influence other ideologies like feminism and has crit and black power has critical views about the history and how we interpret history and is based uh, in anti-colonialism has the goal of anti-colonialism and uh, one of the uh, greatest writers of that era it's uh, james baldwin uh, i will totally uh, recommend you to read his book uh, so his books and actually there's a movie super popular movie called I'm not unique in Netflix or someone else It's super popular. But here we have a, a, a use part of the letters, uh, letters to his nephew. And in this letter, he talks about the construction of capital, cultural capital for the black community and how this capital is injected into the into the next generation and how these communities trying to find validation and confront this validation by the from by the white supremacist ideologies. So it's this constant struggle of of, uh, of creating meaning. Um, here we have a, a Sukika Michael who popularized the term black of uh, black of uh, black power. He was a leader. He was a leader in, in the student nonviolence coordinate coordinating committee help organize communities and here in his speech, I, I, I took fragments of his speech on 1966 speech in Berkeley University, which I think then it captures the main values within black power. And I start with this quote, um, the philosopher Camus and Sastre raised the question whatever or not a man can call themselves, the black existentialist philosopher who is pragmatist Frank Farron, answer the question he said that a man could not we in snCC tend to agree with fire a man cannot condemn themselves in a much larger view snCC says that white America cannot condemn herself for her criminal crime uh, for her crimes against black America so black people have done it used and condemned and uh, it's kind of uh, here the black power is so for the need for confront um, the white America for the need to create this social identity or an identity of the black American be proud of what is uh, the cultural the cultural capital that one's uh, capacity another thing is then he is talking to he's talking to the white American the the white American who doesn't notice the the unconscious who he didn't condemn himself is are, are you sure that you are alive? Like that's kind of the weird question. Like it's when you start to question about those things. So like, are you sure that you are not racist? You need someone to kind of bring you to that. Are you sure that not you're racist? Are you sure like this constant checking? Um, Nets and this from the same speech. I mean, I maintain that every civil rights bill in this country was passed for the white people. Not for black people, for example, I am black. I know that. I also know that white, while I'm black, I am a human being. Therefore, I have the right to go to in any public space. White people don't know that. Every time that I try to go to a public space, they, they stop me. So some boy had to write a bill to tell that white man he's a human being. Don't stop him. We cannot afford to condemn about concern about the six percent black children than you in this country, whom you allow them to enter white schools, we are going to concern about the ninety four percent. You have to be concerned about them too. But are we willing to concern about the black people who will never get to into Berkeley, who will never get into Harvard, and cannot get an education? So there's two parts in this in this in this in these quotes. One, it's how we utilize uh, the legion, how this different view of the civil rights, which was super celebrated, but at the same time, it's like, why we have the need to write someone that don't commit violence? Why, like, if, if we need, if we believe that like, every single human being is equal, and he's, and he's questioning even like, he, he's no question, he's questioning like, 
that then have them people then then white people white supremacists need something a legal framework and this realization of frame on legal bodies to stop racism um and he i think uh, uh spooky carmichael was beyond his time with this quote we can afford to be concerned about the six percent of black children in this country whom you allow to attend in school he's talking about the affirmative action he's talking about like how we value uh, individuals who may be the best of the best the six percent the six percent of the best we're gonna take them and try to be and we're gonna allow them to be into the spaces but he's also asking you like no we are gonna concern about the uh, everyone else we we need to concern about the system and asking who is being who is being denied to enter to this environment to get in education and all this gets civil rights and black body and black uh, black uh, black power gets confront and gets summarized in black studies so black studies um uh, so black is cast by the radical humanistic political transformation efforts and institutionalization black studies to have their roots in the heroic work of w d boy and carter g wilson as a well lesser known also uh also practical is has a practical and political education promotes community class struggle and and social stratification Comfort the nation and racism that Black students confront in higher education, challenge political oppression and issues related to Black identity, urge the need to a Black curriculum in Black studies. And this is one is like one of the, uh, the examples about education within the, in the Black power. It was the center for Black students where this one was a little, a little bookstore called Drum and Spencer Book. Um, who serves as a school people for the black community people from the community for the black uh, community will go to this school for the, to this place and get and the education that we need they will get education for their needs so why i'm asking why i'm telling you all this for, and how we get into this point now we have a like us matter and black matter, black matter as a school. And here they have the same ideology and uh, they take their roots, but also as uh, they promote the black experience and, and, and ask you to reflect himself. And on this one, these questions, you can also apply to call Poly Pomona. How is, this, how is our school relationship to black community organizing? Do we have a relationship with local uh, uh, local movement organizers? Do they see our school as a place that believes in, in their mission? Do they see our school as a place to, con to connect with local families? How are school-wide policies and practices emphasize in this plan and practice applies across, uh, across categories of race? The problem, uh, the problem is parents emerge when we look at how policies are applied to black students, when we also consider the intersection of gender, sexual orientation, and disability with blackness. How are the voices, accomplishment, and success of black folks of later in my lessons, units, and curriculum? So I want to kind of like stop this video and think about these questions and how this or the school is applying this, this framework. But no, but also um, I, I want I, I want to bring you to this education in art, and um, how how or now we have our contemporary uh, contemporary is uh, Takashi Kuates. He is he's been he's has been super influential, and also he has been contributing into uh, comics like uh, the Black Panther. Um, the, and he wrote this beautiful word, the beautiful uh, book called the Between the War, Between the War and Me. And I'm just gonna like show this this video, uh, this book that was made into was moved into a play and then into a film. Black, beautiful, 
need. And we must never submit our original self. Dear son. Son. Dear son. Daughter. Dear brothers. I'm telling you this in your 15th year. There's no uplifting way to say this. One must be. Without error here. Everyone has a story. Here's mine. To be black in the Baltimore of my youth was to be naked before the elements. I wanted to pursue things. I was admitted to Howard University, but formed and shaped by the Mecca. The Mecca is a machine crafted to capture and concentrate the dark energies of all African peoples and inject them directly into the student body. In America, it is traditional to destroy the black body. I'm sorry that I cannot save you. I have always wanted you to attack every day of your brief, bright life in struggle. Struggle for your grandmother and grandfather. Struggle for the memory of your ancestors. Struggle for your name. We have made something down here. They made us into a race. We made ourselves into a people. Yeah, America the ugly. This country is deep. This so, okay, so there's a lot to make down with you, but I want you to focus on this quote. Um, the maker is the machine crafted to capture and concentrate the dark energy of all African people and inject it into, into the student body. It's like this building of community and legacy is directly injected into the black body. So it's kind of like also the need for legacy and how this legacy, all these struggle we it shouldn't be left behind it shouldn't be forgotten and that's why we need those these kind of studies black studies because we never we will need to forget and also empowers the student to act so i think that i think that why this uh, topic was important I think this one more like more important to celebrate the struggle, celebrate, uh, celebrate the uh, black studies, um, and how education and knowledge gives the tools to my to my uh, to materialize the consciousness of black students and everyone who's able to do it. And I think. Uh, why is this um, is Black Identity Academy achieved such an issue? Is the, the negation of identity? It's the negation of one part of the history. It's like we are no, we, America is not complete without Black history. So thank you so much. <laughs>